those are some happy chickens. Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Sean Hodgins and welcome back to my channel. So let's build an internet connected, solar powered, Twitch streaming chicken feeder. That sounds fun. Let's do it. So I've got the design done for the, uh, I'm calling them feeders, but they're dispensers. All these green parts are what I'll be 3D printing, including this one, which is not green. And I'm going to use a belt, a tiny belt, and it's called, uh, I think it's GR2. Anyways, it's a 2 millimeter pitch belt. They're small, you can get them in all types of sizes. And what this will just do is push off on the lever it will tighten the belt and it will turn this handle. So using most of the old hardware from the dispenser and then just tacking this on. So this piece is just meant to lock it when it's spinning, but since it's not being spun by hand anymore, I need to drill that out of there. It's just a little, it's a press rivet of some sort. So, as you can see, the belt goes in there and we're able to adjust the tension. I'm using a 200 millimeter belt, I hope, at least, according to the design. And then you can snug down this top screw and it will hold it in place. I'm going to give the motor 12 volts. We'll see if it spins. Perfect. So here is what I've come up with. It's really simple and I'm using the HCC module that I designed so that I can kind of do this quick development. And I've got a bunch of them kicking around so it just saves me from having to do an entire board with small components. Got the HCC module. Uh, I've got this cool little thing called a TSR um, 12433, which is 2.3 version of a buck converter, and it's going to take the 12 volts to turn it into 3.3. It's easy instead of having to put like inductors. Again, rapid development. Then we've got uh, a four-pin connector on it. So the button LED, which fades on the back, so you know it's on, and the trigger for the button. And then we've got another connector with screw terminals for the Pi, because we're going to have a cable coming out that'll connect with a waterproof connector to the Pi. And that'll also be able to trigger it. So as you can see, they've got pull-up resistors. Then we've got a limit switch for the rotation, which I'll show you how that works once it's done printing. And then we've got a uh, MOSFET for the motor, which will trigger the motor from the microcontroller. And then uh, a diode and capacitor and all the stuff for the motor. And this board's going to mount directly on the motor. I already have these made, so let's populate one, stick it on the motor, and let's see if it works. Okay, so now that this works, solder this on the back and we'll program the Arduino on this 
to accept button presses and an input from the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so we've got uh, the Arduino program written now. We've got this soldered on to the back of the motor. And I've installed the limit switch on this ring here that so it knows when the closed position is. So it'll only do one rotation. So the program's really simple. And we'll go through it real quick and then we'll program it, make sure everything works. We'll test it out. So we just define all the, uh, the buttons and the triggers and the limit switches. So, and of course the, the LED for the button. And then we set them all as uh, inputs or outputs, depending on what we're doing. So the motors and the LEDs are outputs. And the triggers, I've done two separate triggers here because we've got the pie and the button. Uh, and they can do different things. So all it does is it reads the state of both buttons and uh, this is it fading the, the LED on the back so that you know that it's active so that if you want to test it out when you're in the field or just use it to release some of the treats you can do that. So this is all for fading the LED and then it just sees if the buttons either one of them is held down for two seconds. If it's held down for two seconds it'll trigger it so when the Pi receives a donation it will trigger the motor to spin and then we just have this routine here, spin motor, which will just spin it and read the limit switch to see when it's done. And all it does is it starts the motor for a few seconds because it takes a while, then it checks the limit switch and once it triggers, then it stops the motor. Should get something. Okay, so we've got the fading LED. As you can see that. Now let's just know that it's running. It's getting 3.3 volts through the 12 volts, and if we hold this for two seconds, it'll spin the motor one full rotation. So it waits for the little indentation in this 3D printed part to hit the limit switch. So I have this cool three pin waterproof cable here that uh, I'm gonna connect to the Pi I still have to develop a circuit board for that. And I'm going to feed it through this gland nut and we've got to put two holes in the back here. This will make it somewhat waterproof and then we'll feed the button through as well. So I'm just going to freehand drill these. The way these work is you just feed them through and then when you tighten down this outside nut it will tighten down on the wire so you have sort of strain relief as well. But it just slides in and it's held in by the top cover. So. So, so part of the novelty of this design is that when you're at the farm, you'll actually be able to see the donations coming in live. So we had to figure out a way to do that, and what I thought was these cool LED panels would be great. So uh, this is a 32 by 16. LED panel RGB and I'm gonna have three of them which you can get these cool housings that hold three of them like a sign and that's where everything's gonna be housed so the pie and everything's gonna be inside there and to drive them I was testing out using this uh, Adafruit this RGB matrix board that just goes around the pie what this board does is it goes directly on the pie and it just has a couple of relays that will control the IP camera that we're using. So when it's nighttime, the camera, will, everything will turn off and during the day it'll turn on. So it's just gonna be an ongoing system that'll be completely automated. And it just uses a bunch of little screw terminals. So we're gonna connect everything up with screw terminals inside the Pi and I'll make a little uh, 3D printed adapter board for that. Just returned from the metal cutting place. We've got a bunch of metal. I've got to weld together this frame and then I'll explain how this whole thing's gonna work. Let's get to it.
Bush. Okay, so here is where I'm at. I've got the entire frame assembled. I've got the uh, IP camera on, solar panel on, got the Pi inside there, little test battery. One of these completed, got the other one done, needs to be installed on here. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna switch it on, test some stuff out. And right now, the Pi is running but uh, the camera's not running and it's not streaming or anything so it's only pulling 0.1 amps at 12 volts it says 14 but the battery's running at 12 uh, so this output's at 12 volts and right now it's almost 11.30 in the morning it's April so pretty peak not quite noon, but uh, we're pulling in an amp from the solar panel, which is awesome. So, I'm not going to be running out of energy anytime soon. With a bigger battery, it'll be charging more, and then you'll have a longer period of time over the night to keep everything running. Because the Pi will continue to run, but everything else will shut down. You can see the Pi uh, mounted behind the little hat, fake hat thing. The relays, and we got a buck converter over here that converts the 12 volts to 5 volts for everything for the displays and all that and then we've got the IP camera plugged directly into the Pi and the Pi is doing its own DHCP thing so we don't need a router and we're gonna plug a uh, LTE modem right into the Pi you can see the, the three displays here and I put silicon around the outside and they're pretty uh, it's gonna be all watertight and this will shelter the dispensers from getting bombarded with rain, but they shouldn't be too bad either. So the connectors for the two motors here, and now these are waterproof connectors but there wasn't really anywhere good on this uh, housing to mount them that wouldn't have like a, a drip or a wet location. Like if there's a pool of water in here you don't want any connectors or anything on the bottom. You want all your drip loots to be like low so that you know you won't actually get any water on the components or anything sitting in water. You'll just get a little bit of pool, which I don't expect anyways, but you don't want to have connectors in the bottom. So I made this 3D printed uh, part here with the connector holders. We got both of them connected. And they both have power, and we can test them out. Holding this two seconds. One.
That's two. So, they're working. We've got to uh, program the pie. We've got to run some type of program on here that will start in the morning when the sun comes up and then stop at night or whatever set time. And it will also have to turn on the IP camera, which I believe is going to be streaming to Twitch. So that'll be cool. Let's go program it and uh, test out the stream. Okay, so I'm connected to the Pi and it's outside. It's running on battery powered. I've got it through the Wi-Fi and I'm running a Python script that is going to be running all the time on the Raspberry Pi and checking what time it is and if there's new donations. And it also starts the stream, which is up on Twitch. Super cool. So you can see the display and the two uh, dispensers and what happens is when a donation comes in it goes into a Google spreadsheet and the Raspberry Pi checks that spreadsheet for any new donations and when it does it takes the information out of it and it displays it on the LED display so if I right now do a fake donation in the sheet put it updated it there it checks Right now every 30 seconds, which I think is an appropriate amount of time. Speed it up, slow it down, depending on what we're doing. But, it's going to check, finds a new donation, says the tester, and then, since there's a few delays, see, you can see the amount, and the name, and one of them is spinning. So it picks randomly which one's going to go. So... Let's go outside and check it out so we can see it in real life. Okay, so it's actually running right now. If someone was to donate, then one of these would trigger. You'd see their name and the dollar amount. So what's cool is I can access the Google Sheet from anywhere, even on my phone. So what I'm going to do is simulate a fake donation, just like before. Which is simple as changing a 1 to a 0, sending it in, and then it should pick it up. And we'll see if it goes. So let's wait. There it is. I'm getting a bit of flickering, so I have to figure out what's going on there. That's it. We have a donation chicken feeder. It's streaming live. Super cool. So as this project was coming to an end, we were actually getting ready to sell our house, so everything was really crazy. I had it fully built, everything was working well enough, they were going to do some debugging on their end if they had to, and uh, yeah, I managed to pack it all up in a crate, super heavy, shoved into the back of my tiny Yaris, and put it on a truck out to California, and now my friend Nate's going to tell you about his organization and we'll get some shots of it actually working on the farm. So, let's go. Hey everyone, it's Nate. Uh, I'm here working on the chicken feeder. Testing it out lately. Uh, just doing a little debugging, changing up cords, that kind of thing. Trying to get the camera in the right spot. One of the things that we did out here is, you know, of course we have the uh, battery set up. We got the feeders. Um, this is something that I just installed today our cell phone modem. So here you can see inside, there it is, connected to 4G so you get a nice clear picture. This is a little uh, antenna that uh, gets us a little bit better signal outside this box. Uh, but so far it seems to be working really well. Uh, charges off the battery nicely, um, that big 12 volt battery. And then the solar panel that we use, um, monocrystalline, so high efficiency because as you can see, well actually, no, you can't see it right now, but normally uh, it gets pretty foggy out here. So these give us uh, much higher efficiency uh, in those conditions. So um, just doing some final touches, testing it out and hope to get this uh, up and running pretty soon. All right, we just did a test donation. Let's see what happens here.
So I'm gonna keep doing some improvements to this, doing some small modifications, some things I thought of after the project was sent out, some things they thought of, just to make it run a little bit better. And uh, we'll probably open source some of the files so that people can recreate some of it, like maybe the feeding mechanism or something. This is gonna be live on Twitch, so you can go and donate and feed the chickens, which is super cool, and you can see them being fed and your name will get displayed at the farm and on the live stream, so that's really awesome. Anyways, everyone, this was a crazy build. It had so many different aspects to it, and it was a lot of fun. So be good, and have a good day.